Hello and welcome to India Market Open. It's going to be a day of watching out for the Reserve Bank of India. Now, what are they going to do? What are they not going to do is the question. And what are they going to say? <laughs> and will they be asked something beyond Paytm? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> beyond Paytm. I like that. <laughs> not beyond the policy. Yeah, beyond the policy, yeah. But well, an interesting day of trade. But Samina, good, good news is that ahead of the policy, I think our markets have stayed stable to maybe yeah, hardly yeah. positive. And the globe is supportive. Very, I agree. So, but not too much expected in terms of the policy this morning. So, don't get your hopes high. I think what, uh, like Kaniru Jimmy were discussing, I don't think uh, policy is going to be about change in the rates. But I think uh, the governor's tone, his stance, and liquidity management will be critical. And that could be the next sort of support coming in for the rally for Bank Nifty. Yeah, very well put. And actually, because we've heard corporate after corporate speak about how liquidity largely has been tight, maybe loosening a little bit, mm. but largely tight thus far around, um, at least in the month of January, if not February. Yeah. So that is one because the earnings season kind of spoke about it. And yes, you're right, the tone and the tenor, uh, what they say about the Fed impact on our, because yeah. yesterday a clutch of Fed officials have kind of downplayed yes. that, hey, you know, guys, be, be, be yeah, yeah. I think I think markets has always got ahead of themselves. But just talking about liquidity, Neeraj, last week, and this is nearly after six months, uh, where the call rate was higher than the repo rate, finally eased off. So indicating that maybe there could be some conversation around liquidity. Remember, inflation was a worry till a few months ago. Core inflation has come off below 4%, and now that's a little bit of comfort. But we'll talk about all that and more in just a few minutes on Editor's Cut. But very quickly, implied nifty indicating to a flat start. So uh, no surprises there. We shouldn't be getting too excited this morning. Remember, uh, while not much action is expected from the Reserve Bank of India, it's still going to be an important cue that markets and Bank, mark, bank Nifty will be closely watching out for. Uh, like we said, Global Q is largely supportive, so there is nothing too exciting in the world. Uh, well, what if you want to call exciting, one thing could be the Chinese inflation continues to decline for the fourth straight month. Now, why this is uh, being raised is because Chinese officials are now worried that this could turn dis di disinflationary, and that is always bad for the economy. So China, amongst all its concerns, has to deal with one more this morning. Asian markets are trading flat to slightly positive, a little bit of mixed cues coming in from Asia. But a quick check on what Wall Street uh, got up to an overnight trade. Uh, it was a significant day of trade in terms of record levels uh, War met in yesterday's trade. The Dow, the Nasdaq, and the S&P 500 all went home with gains in overnight trade. Well, what caught our attention was also the fact that uh, you had the Fed chiefs uh, being explicitly clear that they aren't expecting more than two or three at best rate cuts uh, in the calendar year. So that is one thing that the markets heard, didn't really react to. So I think that is what we're taking heart from. Uh, the World Index, uh, MSCI World Index, rose marginally 0.5% to its highest level on record. Apart from that, uh, you also had crude, which was in focus. Now, uh, there seems to be no signs of the war easing between Israel and Gaza, and that is what is keeping pressure on crude. U.S. supplies have risen, uh, and that could be keeping the tap in terms of gains, but that's largely what the picture is this morning. Uh, Neeraj, like I said, uh, global queues, boring, but we like boring on some days, especially yeah. on a day like today. Most certainly, but likely to aid sentiment on the upside. Uh, so very un unlikely that uh, there will be too much of a variation there. Maybe banks remain a bit quiet ahead of the policy, but otherwise, Global queues, not not supportive. So I think that's the key thing. Uh, the good part is that um, when you look at quant indicators uh, across the board, there are two or three that I follow and I look at very closely. None of them are indicating substantial downsides, even if there were to be a downtick. So let's assume that uh, you know the indicators are wrong and there is some bit of a downtick that comes around. I don't think the falls will be very, very large. And I think this market has shown that propensity time and again that dips are getting bought into. Never mind how strong the case for a dip might be so i think that's the key thing yesterday we spoke about how um, difficult to see a major case for an uptick in it now viewers look at what cognizant has said in its call and people determine for yourself whether it remains a hope trade or 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 a value buy i mean what cognizant is saying no change in demand environment uncertain and weak discretionary spending in the early part of 2024 so for now nobody's talking about the latter half the early half weak demand trends. BFSI, the sector is burdened with high interest rates and clients are in a wait and watch mode and hence a pause on discretionary spends. In fact, overall, discretionary spending contribution remains 
quote unquote unknown. Now, if this is the case, um, you know, sure, HSBC or some others might find some uh, silver linings, but it's very difficult to make a case that no, this is an informed call. At best, remains a hope trade, a bit of a pullback yesterday. Let's see what happens today. And, and, the, and the sector to watch before we get to stocks remains PSUs. I think that is, is the key thing. Yesterday on close, me and Samina marked some of those stocks which hit uh, highs and were locked on a 20% upper circuit. Well, maybe, maybe, just maybe, uh, what PM Modi had to say also had to do something with it. But just the kind of improvement that we've seen in the base functioning of some of these PSUs is quite stunning. In fact, hear him out uh, as he speaks about uh, the PSUs and how their net worth has moved up over the course of the last few years. Adaniya Sabhamati ji, aaj jis BSNL ko aapne tabha karke choda tha na, wo BSNL aaj made in India 4G, 5G, us taraf aage badh raha hai aur dunya ka dhyan aakarshit kar raha hai. Adaniya Sabhamati ji. HL के लिए इतने भ्रम फैलाए आज रिकॉर्ड मैन्युफैक्चरिंग HL देख रहा रिकॉर्ड रेवेन्यू जनरेट कर रहा है HL जिसको लेकर के इतने जो होलने चलाए और कर्नाटका में एशिया की सबसे बड़ी हेलीकॉप्टर बनाने वाली Company HAL Bangladesh. Where did you leave? 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 ले बोलनी चाहिए बोली और तरीका यही है किसी को बर्बाद करने अफवाह फैलाओ झूठ फैलाओ भ्रम फैलाओ और और टैंगडी भाई है गांवों में किसी का बड़ा बंगलो हो लेने का मन करता हो लेकिन हाथ ना लगता हो तो फिर हवा फैला देते ये भूतिया बंगला है यहाँ जो जाता है ऐसी हवा फैला देते कोई लेता नहीं फिर LIC, LIC, क्या क्या चलाया? आदरणीय सभापति जी, मैं सीना तान करके सुनाना चाहता हूँ, आँखें ऊँची करके के सुनाया चाहता हूँ। आज, आज LIC के शेयर रिकॉर्ड्स तर पर टेड हो रहे हैं। you know, it's interesting, Samina, from the time that he first spoke about PSUs, the PSU index is up 80%. I know Arvind Sanger mentioned that the market has rallied, but, you know, those stocks, from dis people being in disbelief to even astute investors like Ramesh Damani turning believers and making money is quite something. But, you know, what's going to be important now is how much of that is in the price. Agreed. Do we see this rally continue? I think those are a few questions to ask, right? So while the, the larger market is a buy on dip, are PSU still creating or offering that opportunity at this stage is something that uh, is worth discussing. Agreed, but yesterday Sridhar Sivram of Enam, yeah. no less, right? Again, an astute investor yeah. spoke about how PSBs still offer value. And if you look at power, for example, still there is value. So there are people who are still finding value. Talking about PSBs, uh, I think any hint of a rate cut uh, from mm. the RBI governor today will set a lot of these stocks uh, on a further rally. So the next <laughs> leg up for Bank Nifty uh, will be coming in from any hint of a rate cut. Remember, Bank Nifty has been struggling. 47,000 has been an important level on the index and participation hasn't come through in the, all through the month of January and so far in Feb as well. But like we said, we're still in the thick of the earnings season. A uh, couple of good earnings. Uh, unlike yesterday, I've picked two good stocks and one good <laughs> earnings. So, Neeraj, you should be happy about that. We'll start with a good one, Tata Consumers. Uh, pretty fantastic set of earnings to say the least. Uh, I think the markets will also be pleased. Revenue is up 10%, uh, so they've recorded a one-third jump in profits, uh, aided by higher demand for tea and staples during the festive period. Though, remember, the bottom line or the profitability was impacted by a one-time charge. Uh, the company recorded a profit with an exceptional item and a tax of 
5.13 billion rupees in the quarter ended 31st December, up 27% from the last year. The company incurred an expense uh, due to an acquisition-related cost, service expenses and business restructuring. Revenue from ops went up 10%. The business... Uh, uh, which is the domestic business, starter consumers, key beverages segment grew 8% with tea volumes up 2% amid sustained domestic demand. It also benefited from staples demand uh, such as Sol despite higher prices compared to rivals like ITC uh, opens new tab uh, and opens new uh, tab to according to analysts. So that's what you want to keep in mind. Uh, Starbucks as well, which is a global business, actually did pretty well. Uh, recently in Jan, we had news about how Tata Consumer was said it would be buying 75% stake in capital goods known for its Ching Secret and Smith's Joan brand for about 51 billion rupees. Uh, this, of course, uh, is not fully acquired yet, but they also fully acquired the health product arm, Organic India, for 19 billion rupees. So all that led to a one-off exceptional loss on their profits. Uh, but all in all, good sort of earnings comes in the heel of Britannia, which actually posted uh, not such a great sort of earnings. Well, moving on from one good to one bad, as promised, uh, Gujarat, Narmada, another disappointing quarter for the fertilizer major. They witnessed losses mainly due to complex fertilizer nutrient-based subsidy rate change, which was about 28%. Uh, supply has, demand has been struggling. Margins have also come in under pressure. Revenues were down a whopping 22%, and margins have declined to come in at 4% versus 16% that we saw in the same quarter last year. So it's not looking good for a whole bunch of these fertilizer stocks. They've also, in yesterday's day of trade, seen some pressure building up. But ahead of budget, uh, some of these sectors usually witness some buying activity. Apart from that, Apollo tires, we saw what JK did yesterday. Apollo pulling it out once again, rather hitting the ball out of the park. Uh, good earnings from Apollo. Revenues were up. EBITDA was up. Margins have improved substantially to come in at 18% versus 14% and profitability was up by nearly 79%. So great numbers from Apollo, good numbers from Tata Consumer, not so, not so good numbers from Gujarat Narmada. Okay, and you might uh, accuse me of being completely bullish, but look at the numbers that have come in, Samina. You can't help it. I mean, three outstanding numbers, large, mid, small. Okay, so Lupin. I mean, this stock doesn't, or this company doesn't put a foot wrong in the last 12 months. Hardly any USFT observations, clean as a slate. I mean, just a lovely performance per se. And this quarter too, revenue is up 20% at 5197 versus 4861, a 20% revenue growth. Margins up 764 basis points, 19.97% versus 12.32% and ahead of the Bloomberg estimate of 18%. Yes, it was estimated to be higher, but they've beaten even that, as a result of which the profit after tax looking so solid at uh, 613 crores versus 153. Uh, yes, the stock has rallied a bit relative to peers, but with reason, but this is a really strong set of numbers by Lupin and won't be surprised to see some further upticks there. Cummins was a really strong number too uh, and a lot of conversation around whether Cummins is growth is front end in right now uh, in the in FY24 and could the second half be weak well I think they are dispelling those notions revenues up 17 percent ahead of estimates margins up 281 basis points at 20.35 versus estimates of 16 percent by the way the poll was 16 percent so much ahead of estimates net profit at 20.5 percent higher so very strong numbers on there as well and the third one on my radar before we move to the others is Piccadilly Agro the manufacturer of Indri Whiskey. Now, this stock has had a really strong run. Let's pull up the run for Piccadilly Agro first before I go to the numbers and quickly just see how the stock has done. The stock has been on a tear literally the last three to six odd months because people have recognized an Indian brand going global and the value of that, I presume. Now, it is showing in the numbers. So look at, look at the Piccadilly Agro, three months, 27%. Now, look at the numbers. Revenue is up 55% at 191 EBITDA up 95%, extremely strong showing, margins at up 362 basis points on that base as a result of which a nearly 6x jump in PAT to 44.89 versus 6.92. The previous quarter was depressed as well. Um, and just before I get to Samina for the other stocks, keep in mind what Piccadilly Agro has done in quarter three is double PAT mm. of what they done in the first half of for the, the company. Yeah, so quite stunning a performance. Won't be surprised if this stock too 
has an uptick. There's a lot of other stocks though, but Samina, yeah, anything else on your radar? Just quickly, you were talking about how Lupin hasn't had any observations on that same largely, note. Yeah. Uh, largely, It's Piramal Pharma this morning that might be facing some pressure. They, of course, had an FDA uh, inspection concluded and have been issued a Form 4A3 with three observations. The observations were classified under VAI and do not relate to data integrity. But again, important to watch, the stock will be under pressure on back of this Form 4A3. Talking about a little bit of uh, disappointment, Soba's numbers uh, didn't look as spectacular as some of its peers like Brigade Enterprise uh, have managed to post. Uh, revenues were down, EBITDA is down. Margins have also uh, improved slightly, but in terms of the kind of sales that they're doing and uh, the fact that uh, projects are not being concluded fast enough is what could uh, you know, impact Soba and early trade. Uh, sure, Neeraj, I know Soba's supply will come on track, but the fact that they are facing some resistance in uh, project completion, unlike a Brigid, for example, same market as well, same yeah. geography, uh, Soba may get a thumbs down this morning. Yeah, very likely, and it remains to be seen. What may get a thumbs up, though, Samina, aside of the others that we've spoken, is Star Cement. Mm -hmm. Yes, the revenue numbers are kind of single digits, and in line with estimates, but their bid top performance very strong. Yet another cement company which impresses on the margins. 527 basis points uptick in margins to 22.8 versus 17.6 percent. And the PAT up 40 percent at 73 crores versus 52 crores, much ahead of estimates. So Star Cement could be the other one that could be in focus. And off numbers, uh, I think two stocks stood out for me. One of them is Mangalore Chemicals or Paradip Phosphates as the case may be. The merger has been announced. And the swap ratio has an 18% arbitrage in favor of Mangalore Chemicals. So suffice to say, Mangalore Chemicals will definitely start a mm. fire. Does Paradeep correct a little bit in order to remove this arbitrage? Who knows? But these are, they are funny. I mean, Inox, Wind and Inox yeah, have a 40% arbitrage. That was a beautiful so, trade that played out. Yeah, so uh, watch out for Mangalore Chemicals today. And Samina, watch out. I mean, aside of Adani Ports, which has won a bid to operate the Tanzania container terminal, it's quite interesting. Uh, Israel, Greece, Sri Lanka, Tanzania, Adani Ports is spreading its wings, so watch out for that. But from a stock perspective, Wellspun Enterprises, mm. $500 million water treatment plant contract. This one could be very strong today as well. And we'll try and talk to the management at some point to understand the timelines, payment cycles, and what this project really means for Wellspun Enterprise. Uh, two smaller companies, but worth the mention, Relega Enterprise, uh, they recorded a profit of 33 crores against a loss of 95 crores in the same quarter last year. Quarter on quarter, though, the numbers uh, don't look so great. Revenues have declined and profitability has also come up. But on a year-on-year -year period, uh, we have seen an improvement. Now, this could be on back of an exceptional item that last quarter could have witnessed. So that's Ash that's Relega and Ashok Bilkorn as well reported a profit of 110 crores, uh, falling 20% uh, from the last year. This was impacted by low operating margin and a sharp increase in input costs. The stock was up 2% yesterday ahead of earnings. This morning, though, a gap down cannot be ruled out. So those are, of course, uh, the big earnings, the broader market earnings as well that the markets uh, and investors and traders will be reacting to.